G'day you good motherfuckers, the Buttsman here. And I genuinely believe the greatest asset that we have as human beings is our ability to speak freely. The freedom to think, speak, and offend. It's something we all take for granted on a daily basis. And ladies and gentlemen, you better bloody believe it when I say this, we are losing that right and we are losing it at a rapid rate. Now, whenever you talk about freedom of speech in Australia, you always have one fucking loser in the comment section going, oh no, Australia doesn't have any freedom of speech in our constitution, so why are you talking about it? Now, not only is that a weak argument, it's true, but it's a weak argument. Because sure, we may not have it written in our constitution just like the United States does, but we fucking should. I've spoken a lot about freedom of speech on this channel over the past few years. And the fact that we don't have it protected here in Australia is fucking disgusting and disgraceful and it should be rectified immediately. But that's not going to happen. In fact, the exact opposite is happening. Our constitution does not save us from a tyrannical government disposing of our rights willy-nilly. We have some protections, namely the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which, hey, I know nothing about. But have a look at Article 19. It says everyone shall have the right to hold opinions without interference. Just have a quick think over the last 18 or so months. Has that been upheld? Number two, every Everyone shall have the right to freedom of expression. We may have that protecting us somewhat, but even the Americans who have the freedom of speech as their defining characteristic as a country don't really have it. They have laws in place that when bent a certain way will remove you from public discourse. Now is that an issue when it comes to freedom of speech? You better fucking believe it is. If you don't play ball, if you don't fit the status quo, then you are seen as trouble and you're fucking removed immediately. So if Australia doesn't have freedom of speech and America doesn't really have freedom of speech, I'll tell you one country who definitely doesn't fucking have it, and that's Scotland. Their hate crime bill, it is put in place to charge people if they, and I quote, stir up hatred, which, you know, sounds quite fair. But if you look at the bill for more than three bloody seconds, you'll realize that it's fair in some circumstances, but it affects a lot of other people quite negatively immediately. Under these plans, behavior or communication that was threatening, abusive, all sounds great so far, in the case of racial hatred, insulting and stirs up hatred against a protected group, which would constitute a hate crime. It sounds great in theory, but insulting? That's a key word there, insulting. Things that would offend you are different to things that will offend me and much different to things that would offend other people. And that's a dangerous path to head down. This is a fight. And it's a massive fight. It's a war. It's a war against imaginary sounds that we make with our mouths that could somehow, for some reason, land someone in jail. There are even ideas out there, ideas or concepts that people hold. Even if it's most people, if that doesn't run in line with the beliefs, the thoughts, and the fucking political agenda of the ideologues that for some reason run the social medias and all that type of shit, then you will be banned, shut up, and your freedom of speech will be squashed. Which is why when I saw my mate Friendly Geordie, he's an Australian YouTuber, comedian and political commentator, make a video about freedom of speech, I really paid attention. If you didn't know, Friendly Geordie's right now is being sued by a bloke called Bruz, or John Barillaro, the second in charge of the biggest state in Australia, New South Wales. Yes, he's spending his time when he should be running a fucking state that's currently in the middle of a pandemic, he's spending his time suing someone because they made fun of him. Boo fucking who, Bruz, you fucking sook. Anyway. Geordie's posted a video about freedom of speech, particularly about something called the News Media Bargaining Code. Now, I covered this in a video, so did a lot of other people. He also went on to talk about how that News Media Bargaining Code went on to affect other things. If you don't know anything about the News Media Bargaining Code, it's basically all the old school media publications, the papers, all that type of shit, carrying on and whinging because people like me have more reach than them. And the news media is dying. 
They're dying because they're not making enough money and they're not making enough money to pay for these giant office blocks. And rather than, you know, making their product a bit better and changing it from the only people who read newspapers these days are old fucks to check the obituaries to make sure all their friends aren't fucking dead. They actually just whinge and bitch and moan to Google and basically said, and I may be paraphrasing, please give us more money, please. But it goes further than that. You see the same politician that is suing Friendly Geordies is also suing Google. And if they are found guilty, then Google, who owns YouTube, will become a place where people not just put videos up and you know have their opinions out there, they will be known, particularly in Australia, as a publisher, just like a newspaper. And then they are responsible for every single thing that every single person posts on their website. Which means, Will YouTube sit back and go, you know what, uh, did Isaac say the right things today? Yes. Did Friendly Geordie say the right things today? Yes. Did Lewis Spears, did Neil Cole Hacker, did fucking Frenchie? And they'll basically go, you know what, Australia can fuck off, no more YouTube. But that's not where it stopped. There was also the online safety bill. Now the online safety bill was put in for some good reasons. It was passed into Australian law to help people who are getting abused online or having their nude shared around or being attacked racially whatever. And that's obviously a good thing. We want that to, we want people to be safe on the internet, no doubt. But when you, like with any of these things, when you do a deep dive into the bill, like my friend Neil Cole Hatkar did on his channel. Now, if you want to check out Neil's channel, he actually made a video and he even read the entire 200 page document, which outworked me by 199.9 pages. So well done to you, Neil. You're fucking killing it. But the main issue here in layman's terms is there is one person in control, the e-safety commissioner and she decides what's safe and not safe for you. It could be argued that you could say something in the internet that could land you in court that isn't really that bad at all. Because here's what they're running off on the legislation. If you post something that an ordinary reasonable person in the position of an Australian adult would regard the material as being in all circumstances menacing, harassing, makes sense right so far, or offensive. So does that mean you could go to jail or go to court or be fined for an offensive joke? Should they not be allowed to speak their mind and make offensive jokes? That means you could face fines, I could face fines and we could all be in fucking trouble. Moreover, it means that we have now lost our ability to say whatever the fuck we want. Our freedom of speech has not only in Australia been wounded, it's had its fucking head chopped off and no prick in the media has talked about it. You may recall this video that I made about Eshays. It was taken down by a legal complaint to YouTube. Now I reached out to YouTube and I said, why was this taken down? They said, we can't give you any more details. It's currently a legal issue. So I did some digging myself and I found a comment section. This was around the same time Byron Bay was whinging about me coming in there to do a show, which we sold out and it was a great show. Anyway, who gives a shit, right? There was a comment section where a lady was complaining that I had used a photo photo of her son dressed as an Esher. Now this was a young fella, all right? And he was quite upset about it. Rather than just messaging me and say, hey, this is an issue. Can you, you know, blur him out of the video or whatever, which I would have done immediately. And I had no idea how young he was. It was on fucking Google images. She was given the advice to go to the e-safety commissioner. Now I don't know if that happened. This is, I'm just hypothesizing. But then almost two weeks later, it was taken down for no reason. Once again, if they just emailed me, I would have fucking changed it myself. And I'm sorry if I caused this young fella any harm or anything like that. That's not what I'm here for. That video was taken down because of one person complaining. Anyone could have anything taken down under the guise of offence, and that is dangerous. Have a look at this article. This is from the ABC. Australians subjected to vile online abuse and harassment will have greater protections from trolls if new powers pass the federal parliament this evening. It's nice in theory. But jokes, if you make jokes about people, that is in effect trolling. Is making fun of someone's appearance or their ideology or their religion grounds for a crime? Surely not. And it is with statements like this that gets people behind their movement. With the surge of abuse being directed at women, with up to 70% of the reports of abuse being from women, the way that online harassment, gendered violence really manifests towards women is very different than it's directed towards men, e-safety commissioner Julie Imran Grant said. This is how they get people behind them. They say something obvious that we all agree with, that you shouldn't be violent towards women or you shouldn't attack women, all that type of stuff. 
and then they sneak in these other little sneaky fucking moves when you're not looking. The same thing happened with Erin Mullen, a football commentator here in Australia. And this is when I first heard about this whole thing last year. The hordes of death threats, threats of physical violence, threats to rape my daughter that have been sent to me, written about me, have taken me to an incredibly dark and scary place in the past. I am strong, I am resilient. And these things should never happen. You should not abuse people online, right? I know this for absolute fact that it happens all the time. Remember the Christchurch massacre joke that I told? People got mad at that. And you know how you get message requests on Instagram? I had 80,000 message requests, all telling me to kill myself, that I, they were gonna drown my dogs, they were gonna attack me in a park, all this shit threatening to rape my unborn daughter. Fucking insane shit. And people who send that shit should be punished for it. You should be fucking charged with harassment. But. It's the stuff that they sneak in behind those things where the real problem lies. It's not just a problem, it is damaging. Everyone is affected by the attack on freedom of speech. The online safety bill, the media bargaining code, all of these things in Australia, they are all done because the mainstream, the status quo, all of that is being challenged. They now don't have control over people like me or other people with a loud voice online and therefore they are freaking out and it's almost like that these politicians who push these laws through they almost act like they have like they have favors to give to the media it's almost like they owe them something surely that couldn't be the case an informed public and a public that thinks for themselves is the most dangerous thing of all having our thoughts molded for us is a disastrous symptom of a tyrannical government that decides what you and i can think and i don't believe that's what we have right now but tyrannical governments always have a starting point could this be ours probably not but it might well be think freely speak freely and don't fucking dare give up on your freedom of speech. Ladies and gentlemen, be a good motherfucker. Peace in the Middle East. Me dick stings. To love war. Bye bye. Hit it, boys. G'day, you good motherfuckers. How are you?